Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Megan Wood with Becker's Hospital Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled, enter a question for staff and clicking send. We are looking forward to hearing your questions. In about a week following the webinar, we will be sending all registrants a copy of the presentation to the email you use to register. Please be patient as the post-webinar preparation of materials can take some time. Today's webinar is brought to you by Invera Health, an engagement services partner committed to advancing consumer-driven care and creating customers for life. It is now my pleasure to introduce Aaron Dyer, Executive Vice President of Growth at Invera Health. Aaron works to assess organizational goals build cross-functional teams, and create multifaceted engagement solutions. Before joining Invera Health, she served as a Corporate Vice President in Corporate Communications, Marketing, and Outreach at Carolina's Healthcare System. Previously, she served as Director, Corporate Communications for the Cleveland Clinic. Erin graduated with honors from Case Western Reserve University with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Sociology. She earned a Master of Education in Education, Counseling, and Human Behavior at Vanderbilt University, and recently earned her executive MBA at Northwestern University, Kellogg School of Management. I will now turn the floor over to Erin to begin today's presentation. Thanks so much, Megan, for the intro and for Beckers for bringing us all together today. Um, you know, the pending merger that we've all just recently heard from CVS and Aetna you know, sparks a fundamental question. You know, who's going to lead the relationship between consumers and, health, and the health care that they need and that they want? You know, my viewpoint and our viewpoint at Invera Health is that the integrated healthcare system is the best position stakeholder to own this relationship and establish that, that uh, connection to their consumers. And what they don't often have um, is an organized and centralized uh, front door or a, a service wrapper around how you present um, your touch points with the healthcare consumer and get those patients connected to the right care for the right things at the right time. You know, Invera Health Engagement Center, or as some might say, call center, uh, is enabled by a unique CRM. Uh, we do create a unified front door for a health system and that it does extend across marketing access and care coordination. We, we aim to deliver a one-touch resolution, one-touch resolution experience for your consumers. We're really excited and proud to work with Vanderbilt Health and consider ourselves a honored part of their team. Uh, you're going to hear some great things from both Jill and Megan today around the incredible work they're doing to serve their consumers and transform healthcare as they know it. I am happy to introduce Jill Austin, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, she leads Vanderbilt's market positioning and presence, integrated marketing strategies and programs, including corporate relations and an interactive social and media, market research on trends and consumers. I also want to introduce Megan Proust, who's Vice President of B2B Marketing and Communications at Vanderbilt. Megan leads a team that supports the Medical Center's communications, engagement, and growth-related goals as it works to transform the delivery of care from fee for value to fee for volume among its provide, from fee for volume to fee for value among its providers and facilities, as well across the region of the Vanderbilt Health Affiliated Network and all of its new business ventures. I'm happy to pass along the rest of the presentation to Jill and Megan. Great. Well, thank you very much, Erin um, and Megan, before you. Um, so you might all have heard or noticed from Erin's introduction that both uh, Megan Pruitt and I are from marketing. And if I were you, some of you, I would be sitting there and I would be thinking, now, why is somebody from marketing, what are they doing talking about access? And really, the answer to that question is twofold. And one is that, that it lies in the very title of our presentation here together about featuring retail-oriented strategies uh, to transform patient experience with emphasis on patient experience. Um, what we know, and I, I love this quote from the Barrel Institute, is that brand and patient experience really are two sides of the same coin. So you can see from a brand perspective, we know that brand is the sum total of all of our company values as evidence how we deliver on those promises and those values at every touch point. And then on the other side of the equation is the patient experience, which is the sum of all interactions that are shaped by the organization's culture and that influence our patient's perception across the continuum of care. So really, the two of those are, as we would say, inextricably linked, and they go hand in hand. And the other uh, reason why we are on the call is really because 
we are honored and privileged to work with a whole team of people where we are all joining together to focus and align around our customer, our patient experience, aligning on processes and experiences and uh, promises. So, you know, joining with us on this work, whose work we are honored to talk about, are, are many parts of our organization, such as our customer relations team, our operations, clinical, IT, research, patient experience, population health, and many, many more. Um, so, uh, again, that's why we are happy to be here talking about that with you today. Now, you know, patient experience is not really a new idea to healthcare. Uh, you know, we all have uh, been involved in patient-centered patient care for, for quite some time. Um, and at Vanderbilt, we have a patient and family promise. And at the very heart of that promise is, it's all focused on making our patients and their families the number one person in the care team. Uh, we have a set of values that we live by at Vanderbilt. It's called our credo. And we make those we serve our highest priority is one of those values. Uh, the head of our clinical health system talks about how uh, we all, it's all on, it's for all of us to treat others as we would want a family member treated. And really, that's partly all that idea about how do we really focus on our patients and their experience. I love this a little anecdote that one of our CEOs uh, told us, which was when he was sharing with one of our environmental services uh, personnel the, our uh, strategic directions that our organization is, is um, evolving, he was talking about how we are designing for patients and families and some of the other key areas that we're focusing on. And he asked for some feedback about the environmental services, about what all that sounded like to him. And the environmental services person looked at him and he said, well, yeah, everybody knows the patient comes first. So patient experience is something that is not a new realm to us. Thinking, though, about how we extend the idea of patient experience out into kind of customer experience, and thinking about, again, from a patient and from customer, meaning they're not yet our patient, or maybe they'll never be, but they're, but they're uh, not necessarily in our facilities yet, you know, you can see that there's a lot of other people out there that are setting the bar for what does customer service really mean. So, of course, Alexa, uh, you know, we know that um, that was one of the number one Christmas and holiday present was uh, an echo or a dot from Alexa. Uh, we know that people that are using voice-assisted devices like Alexa, there's been a 20% increase of that. Um, at the end of last year, and then there's some prediction that up to half of all searches will be voice-enabled by the year 2020. Uh, we know that even Siri has taught us to ask our, search, our searches and questions. Uh, we ask who, what, where, and how now. Uh, we never used to do that. And, you know, Google is telling us that searches that are near me, that is, something, something near me, have gone up 100% in just one year. So um, others are setting the expectation for what our customers in healthcare are looking for. And of course, that's just one piece of the puzzle. There's Open Table, Uber, Lyft, Amazon, and I was going to tout their recent announcement of hands-free shopping, but you know, of course, you've seen just yet another little announcement that they've had about uh, what, they're, what they're thinking about. Uh, star rating. Match.com, two-step authentication. This is what our customers are expecting from an experience with us. So uh, now, uh, just for a word of context as we uh, go on to the rest of our presentation, um, just introducing you uh, briefly to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, we are an academic medical center located our main campus in Nashville, Tennessee. And as an academic medical center, we provide education and uh, research and clinical care. Some 2 million outpatients and 60,000 plus inpatients, et cetera. Um, but we really also uh, think about ourselves as a discovery engine in which we ourselves, as Vanderbilt, are our own learning lab. And we're a learning lab in this particular case on customer experience and patient experience with several different lenses. One is, of course, we're a provider of healthcare, so we're in that equation on that side of the uh, customer experience. We're also an employer. In fact, we're one of the largest in Tennessee, the second largest private employer with 22,000 employees. 
and we are also our self-funded health plan. So um, there's a number of things that you'll hear about today that we are also doing, learning on ourselves about uh, how to think about customer experience and, and, uh, and, and patient experience as we, um, as we sort of discover that and then look at how we might uh, share that and, and uh, scale it. Uh, we also located not just on the campus of, of Tennessee, but throughout um, locations in Nashville and beyond. Uh, we are physically located in 50 plus locations um, and in some virtual uh, locations as well. And we'll, and we'll talk about that as we go uh, on in our uh, uh, call today. Um, but we also are uh, out there on our own, but joining with others um, in our uh, uh, care and, and that we offer out into the marketplace. And we are also um, a member, one of the founding members of a network that is collaborating to deliver better care and build healthier communities. Yep, and um, the Vanderbilt Health Affiliated Network is a key part of our uh, learning lab mentality. Um, we really see the work that we can do to transform health across the state of Tennessee um, in partnership with um, providers like um, Erlanger, West Tennessee, um, Baptist, um, as well as um, major practices um, really is um, the future of how we're going to um, deliver efficient, effective um, care and really transform the health of populations. So um, our network, as you can see with this slide, has um, quite a large footprint. Um, and it powers um, several different health plans with national carriers as well as the self-insured plans of our participating health systems. So we're really proud of that work and there's a lot of ways in which we are um, using that network front door and its access points um, as ways to better care for the population. Um, part of the work that we're doing um, with the network involves a major grant from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, the Transforming Clinical Practices Initiative, um, where our team members are working with physicians and practices across the state to help them prepare for value-based care and ensure they and their, parent, their patients are really going to benefit from this transformation. So, um, you know, we have um, really worked with um, practices, both urban and rural, to um, improve the quality and cost of care um, and then bring those learnings back here, um, back to the health systems partners that we have in the network. So in, um, with that background, um, in addition to the trends that we keep in mind as we think about, all right, how do we really challenge ourselves to um, extend our patient experience and think about customer experience, is, is that uh, we do a lot of active uh, touch points with our customers to know uh, what they're thinking and what they're saying and what they desire. Uh, so from patient advisory boards um, to uh, ask uh, or advise Vanderbilt with 5,000 participants to round tables with employers to interviews, ethnographic research and focus groups, we think it's really important to keep in touch with, with what the market is, is telling us and what they're saying. So I'm uh, going to tell you briefly about our most recent uh, touch with the marketplace where we were out uh, talking to what we consider to be the chief medical officers of our households, which are women, 24 to 54. And as you can tell from that, uh, those numbers, that that spans millennials and baby boomers, and it spans them through different life stages that they're in. Uh, so we asked them to describe a desirable experience, really thinking about the uh, patient experience, but also customer experience and what is really important to them. Um, so uh, what we discovered was three main points, which was uh, near me, for me, and know me. And um, we're going to go into those in a little bit more detail uh, around uh, as we kind of describe what we're doing to become more retail-like or, or more customer experience-like um, in our journey. So first of all, um, the near me, uh, you can see that people, and this is basic, this is a verbatim, they wanted to know that it was about convenience and that it was about making care uh, uh, easy to get to uh, based on when they want to get it and where they can get it. So really um, thinking about, you know, near me. Uh, when we think about our millennials, which again, were part of our uh, focus groups, we know that a little under a half 
tell us that they really don't really want to have a, a long-term primary care relationship. They're really interested in something very convenient and very immediate. You know, we recall that a good bit of that generation grew up with 24, you know, seven groceries and online banking, and you know, they're they're ready for it now, and they're ready for it to be convenient and near me. So, a couple of examples that we're going to share with you about how we're thinking about that, and again, this is about the access equation in terms of making things near people that is convenient to them. Uh, the first one is talking about. Um, our, uh, our walk-in clinics and our convenience care, uh, convenience care um, uh, portfolio. So we have some uh, dozen walk-in clinics uh, across uh, our, our market that we serve, some of them in, including with uh, some of our st uh, strategic partners. Uh, we have recently, as in the fall, November, uh, opened 14 clinics uh, within the Walgreens locations around uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, we also offer uh, children's after hours and sports injury after hours. Uh, so uh, quite a few different options for people that are physically near them. Another um, offering that we have are, um, is a, an offering called uh, Vanderbilt Health on Call. And as you can see, um, that's where we come to you. So having it be near you means it's actually right where you are. Um, we come to your home or your office. There's also um, a lot of work that we have done both through the lens of being an employer ourselves um, as well as through a population health lens. Um, a lot of work that we're doing to help area employers um, really bring access and a front door for healthcare right to their employees. So um, we have uh, several employer-based clinics that are a key part of this um, uh, area for us. Um, there's a picture there of a ribbon cutting from the grand opening of Metro Nashville Public Schools uh, recent um, $20 million employee wellness building that was built using all savings from the employee health plan that the um, health plan leader, David Hines, at Metro Nashville Public Schools has really um, helped uh, bring to his employees, uh, and Vanderbilt is a key part of that model. So we um, help care for the employees and family members um, in the schools here in Nashville, um, and the data of the health plan is really starting to show that um, the services and the care model that's being employed for those folks is really starting to correlate to having improved um, educational outcomes in the schools. So we're really uh, proud of that work um, with Metro Nashville. Um, there's also, those of you who have visited Nashville may have visited um, Gaylord Opryland, but you may not know that we have an on-site clinic at Gaylord Opryland um, that is um, really trying to meet the unique health care needs of a hospitality business. And so if you take a population health lens and think about um, the hours and the work environment of folks in hospitality, you, that is a very um, important population of folks to uh, think about how you could do something near them, close to them, close to work during the hours in which they are available to receive their care. Um, and actually, if you go to Opryland, um, that is a service that's available to guests to the hotel as well, so bringing it right there on site. And then um, a really unique program that Vanderbilt has run now for several years is with um, our partners at um, Ingram, Ingram Barge. And um, you can imagine that there's really um, a challenging need um, to meet the unique healthcare needs of um, barge captains and, and barge crew, um, given how far they are away from care most of the time and the shifts they, care, they have on the ship. So um, we actually have a unique program for them that um, helps them both when they're on the boat as well as they're on land. So we've really taken uh, um, planes, trains, and automobiles, I guess, approach here to several of our access points and um, making sure that we have front doors that meet the unique healthcare needs of certain employee populations as well. So the next characteristic that we're going to give some examples around is the for me characteristic. Um, that is, uh, can you make, personalize my care so it's appropriate to me? So how do I know this is for me is really the question that's being asked. 
So uh, one example that I want to share with you has to do with our surgical weight loss area. And um, I particularly love this example because it's a great example of where we uh, are teaming with our clinical and our operations and marketing to really lay out the real customer journey that's involved. Um, here's where we really began to think together that the patient experience goes beyond when, when they come into us or, or start uh, looking at, at this as a particular service and actually come to our uh, patient coordinator, but it really starts way, way beyond this where people are asking, could this be for me? So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how we're uh, working through with that. Um, one is that we're going to where our consumers are, so we're reaching out to them reaching out to them through um, email uh, directly to them, where they might come to a landing page and uh, be able to fill out a contact form and ask to be uh, contacted. Or, um, and we've reached out to them through uh, a Facebook-sponsored post. So here's two examples of reaching out to them. Um, on the other side of the equation is making sure that we are where they are in terms of search, where they're doing search. Uh, as you all know, about 80% of all uh, health-related search, searches start online, so we know that it's really important to own, the, um, the, to own that first page of Google. And so many different ways in which we do that. One is paid ads, where we uh, you know, literally pay to appear at the top of the search results. And you can see here, we just used the last 90 days to show you the kind of results that we get. Uh, we also make sure that we have uh, optimized our search engine optimization so that that puts us at the top of the organic or non-paid results. And then also, we work very carefully on making sure we feed the correct information to Google for that little box over on the right side where people are uh, searching um, through that uh, box, and if you've probably experienced this, where you're searching on your phone and you see that box come up, and you go directly uh, to that box, and you can you can see the um, that in the last 90 days, for example, we've had about 9,000, 10,000 Google search uh, inquiries. Now these uh, searches that people are doing, and then clicks, and then clicks to calls, um, are uh, are we are set up for them to come through into uh, our engagement center, uh, which we have teamed with Invera on. And so in this particular case, uh, when they're interested, uh, they either are calling and coming to, um, to, uh, to our engagement center that way, or they're filling out a form, as we showed you, and we're reaching out through the engagement center to talk to them. And you know, really, they started that quest about, is this for me? And what we're finding is, is that our engagement center helps to really um, answer those frequently asked questions, making sure that the, all the information that really needs to be uh, gotten is, is, is taken care of. And then that means when, when that uh, customer or, protect, or potential patient lands in the hands of our uh, patient coordinator, then that patient coordinator can really concentrate on coordinating them through the rest of the journey and their care and not spend their time on uh, questions that they've, you know, that they that can be answered in a, in a different way. Um, you'll also notice that we have circled the reviews and reputation management piece on this page. And um, as again, I'm sure most of you do when you're looking for, you know, restaurants or hotels or those sorts of things, you know, you're looking for the reviews and those star ratings to find out, you know, how to shape your idea about what you, where you want to go. We know from uh, statistics that it turns out that people consider reviews, uh, reviews and star ratings um, almost like a personal friend or family member has given them a suggestion. So they're ever more important in this whole idea about getting people to the right uh, place and the right match for them. Um, another topic uh, or another example is to pick back up on, on the, what I was telling, talking about before on all of our convenience care um, locations. And so, um, you know, we, what we did when we brought on our uh, Walgreens uh, locations in November was we launched or refreshed our, uh, our walk-in website to really pull all of our offerings in together uh, so that, uh, that, we, that we could present that as one um, option, uh, really helping people understand where they could find something near them and for them. And what is great about that is, again, thinking about shared purpose and this isn't just marketing's job, or job or marketing's work. This is really all about taking all of our different areas that serve customers through 
after hours and online and walk-ins and all coming together to understand where all of our locations are and then also in terms of for me um, working on what are the conditions or the symptoms that people have so that we can help uh, shape where they're going uh, based on again for near me and for me and uh, what you'll see is that um, what we've seen is, since December is we've seen about 40,000 visits into our into this website, um, and we've also seen on that uh, powerful Google box um, to the right uh, when, uh, when you're searching things um, about 150,000 uh, searches on our on this kind of care, looking for this kind of care, and we've had about 9,000 calls in that six-ish week period, um, again, uh, coming through to our engagement center, um, in looking for information such as billing, um, uh, again, confirming what services, uh, and, and thinking about uh, is there a, is, uh, you know, what would, might be the wait time. The number one thing people are searching on as they come through is actually what is my insurance coverage. And that actually is not really a surprise to us because as you can see here, from uh, how we uh, put together our doctor or physician profiles, we know that the number one thing or factors when choosing a physician is um, does it accept my insurance? So we know that's a really important thing from an access perspective um, to, to be able to help people understand, again, is this even for me? Yeah, and thinking through the lens of our network and the uh, managed patient populations that we have responsibility for, uh, we're really trying to improve health plan trends, both cost and utilization. And so we really have a constant need to ensure um, the patients on these plans have all the information available to them to help them identify providers and practices that are for them or in their network. And so um, we all know um, that it can be challenging to establish yourself with a PCP um, when you're uh, new to a plan or new to a market as we've had such population growth in Nashville. So we've made a real special effort to make sure that our network patients can find their in-network access points, especially when they need care quick. So you're seeing here on the screen um, a new feature on our network's website, which is vhan.com, um, where we now have a quick care tool to help our members find and easily locate um, any one of the 100 or more walk-in urgent care or retail clinics that can provide care for themselves or their children. And along a similar principle to what Jill was speaking about, you know, it really is about where do you want to receive your care and how can we um, get that information to them in their hands in a convenient um, desktop or mobile friendly way that allows them to, to feel empowered to make those choices. Um, so interestingly, you'll also see um, in the one mobile photo there, the blue bar, um, this uh, site, has also been coded such that our employees on our own health plan, when they log in from a Vanderbilt IP address, the site recognizes that they are likely an employee and also offers them up our on-site clinic for employees. So um, it's just one of the ways that we can really target in on a population and the care they might be looking for or might need and then um, really um, offer them up options that are very much uh, near them and for them, for them through the lens of, um, is this part of my insurance coverage? Um, and this work really has helped us to um, talk about a number of different ways we can use the quick care tool as a foundation for some work with um, an engagement center like Invera. Um, where we can try to impact ED visits and in-network utilization and other um, key clinical metrics that we have from a population health perspective. The third dimension that we mentioned from our customer research was know me. And again, here are some uh, verbatims from that. Um, I, I think it's really interesting that po people talked a lot about this whole proactive idea about how would, could we reach out proactively um, with ideas for them um, and also um, how can we know them outside of their health issues. So uh, we're going to give you a couple of examples um, as we, again as we kind of work on this uh, idea of customer experience, patient experience, and then ultimately loyalty. 
Um, so the uh, first example actually uh, has to do with our My Southern Health blog. Uh, so um, My Southern Health, we launched about two years ago, um, and the, this blog is designed to share content of appeal uh, in between when people even think are thinking about needing us for healthcare. And you'll notice that it's not really uh, branded very, um, you know, not, it's not all about Vanderbilt. It really is about, uh, it's really supposed to be about the consumer and what is of interest to them. And so I uh, share this particular article here, or this post on staycations uh, for fall break, because as it turns out, the most popular posts that we get are our spring and fall uh, break uh, ideas for staycations, um, which, I, which is kind of fun. And, you know, again, you might be scratching your head thinking, all right, what in the world is a health system doing talking about staycations? Well, if you think about it, um, on that, uh, again, uh, how do we, how do we uh, build a relationship and provide information of value to people? Uh, this is something that they're interested in. It really is about family activities and uh, that work-life balance and uh, community, uh, being active in the community and what matters to them. Um, another thing that I'm sure this probably won't surprise you, another uh, uh, set of posts that are very popular have to do with healthy recipes. So again, things that are, you know, are related to activity and health and family and those sorts of, of, of areas. You can see that we've uh, had uh, quite a few total visits, about uh, over one and a half and actually more than that at this point visits. Um, and we know that between 150 and 225 uh, people have actually uh, been have actually had some of this content or have shared some of this content via social media. So um, actually, uh, uh, and then this is very um, uh, has been a very successful way for us to to build this relationship with people and and make sure again we know you know what is what is for for them and uh, and that we know them and know what they're interested in. Um, another um, example. Um, Uh, it has to do with uh, what uh, what we've done uh, with our health fairs and sort of reinventing them. And I'm going to let Megan tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think this um, this work uh, really um, exemplifies um, how we have um, coupled the need for access as well as the research that we know about um, what our patients are looking for and how we can exemplify that we know what they may be needing or, or wanting from healthcare. So um, I think that, um, you know, obviously, again, through a population health lens, you know, ultimately we're trying to impact change at a population level, but we're, we're looking at the specific needs of a certain population. And so for our employees at Vanderbilt, for example, um, we know that our caregivers um, very much are um, interested in um, what is on my health to-do list. And so we reoriented our health fair to be all about helping our employees um, know what some of the key items might be on their health to-do list and helping them accomplish those right there at the health fair. So um, this health fair is not about your traditional um, kind of um, trying to drive volume to um, key service areas, but it is about how do we make sure that our employees are getting the care that they need um, and are equipped and empowered with the information that can help them do that? Um, and so we have um, a large portion of the health fair is about um, helping people um, take a digital health assessment to understand what some of the gaps may be that they um, could use in their preventive screenings. Um, helping them to connect directly to those providers that can help them uh, schedule for those um, services. Um, helping them identify in-network primary care physicians um, that they can establish themselves with, and of course using the quick care tool we spoke about before for those um, uh, quick health care needs they might need be before or even while they have a PCP um, but need to, to have uh, a health issue addressed quickly. Um, and then we um, also have an area for them to connect with um, their patient portal. So we're helping with our, uh, our new EPIC install that started in November. Um, we have a, a push around getting our employees to use their patient portal because we can engage with them and use that as a front door for various um, information and services as well. 
and our employees very much like uh, their ability to sign up for mail order pharmacy at the health fair um, and connect with nurses who can really help them better understand any of the chronic conditions that they or their family members may have. So we're really um, proud of this work and have gotten really good feedback from our employees on it. And it really has become a new way for us to engage our employees. Um, and we're um, really excited to take this to other formats in our employee population. Um, taking that work forward, um, we also worked um, with Invera on some outreach to our uh, patients who had gaps um, to help them recognize that they may have a health care screening that they need to um, talk to their PCP about this year. So um, previously, when we had um, patients that had gaps, uh, you can imagine that we were um, trying to reach out to as many of them as we possibly could using very traditional methods. Um, but this year, we were able to um, reach out to all of our patients on our health plans that had a gap and make them aware of that gap and encourage them to either call us or engage with their PCP about it. So we were able to reach out to 23,000 patients this year that had one or more tests or screenings that they still needed to do. And what we found was um, similar to when you get a reminder for your, from your dentist that you need to schedule your screening, your cleaning, um, our patients really appreciated the fact that we had raised this to their attention. And um, we're still analyzing the data to see um, how many additional gaps we were able to close. But um, we were also able to talk to them about PCP um, if they had one and if they needed help with that as well and that engagement touch point. So really thinking about how we can um, use some of our preventive care methods as a way to create a new engagement point with our patients. So thinking about what's next for um, the customer journey, the uh, customer experience, patient experience, near me, for me, know me. Um, one is expanding our technology-enabled interactions. So a couple examples of that are uh, perfecting or, or refining our Save Our Spot and Wait Time app uh, for some of our uh, convenience and quick care locations. Um, Megan mentioned uh, our Epic in, uh, install, so really activating our return appointments online and being able to send health reminders out through our portal. Uh, those kinds of activities are, are on, our, on our list. Um, I actually had on my short list that we were um, going to be uh, working on through with Alexa um, for a skill, um, and as it turns out, we've actually just launched it, so I'm going to tell you just briefly about that, um, and that is our uh, flu tool. Very so, timely. Very, very timely. Very timely. So if you uh, have uh, uh, Alexa, you can go to her and uh, tell her uh, to uh, enable flu tool and then ask Alexa, is it the flu? And she will lead you down through a series of questions, uh, uh, then helping you understand uh, if it is or isn't, likely is or isn't, and then where from there uh, might be the right uh, place for you to, to follow up and do next. Um, also, just speaking of EPIC, uh, some of our bioinformatics and uh, other members of the team are working on uh, taking the idea of voice assisted um, and voice enabled and applying it to the uh, electronic health records. So at, at some point in the near future, you'll be able to uh, talk to your health rec record instead of having to read it. So that's kind of um, exciting and, and interesting. And again, I would say uh, part of a patient experience and a customer experience that people you know, would be surprised but delighted about. Um, from a engagement center perspective, uh, we're looking at how do we really expand this idea of uh, customer journey across all parts of the continuum, you know, really making sure we're understanding uh, how do we invite people or how do we find them that are looking for uh, our services, and how do we really bring them in and, and, and have it feel like one experience across all of our touch points. Um, so we're going to be expanding those kinds of um, services that we have and uh, thinking about then how do we uh, really lean into the, the idea that we might be able to get in touch with people at, um, at night and over the weekends and those sorts of hours. Um, so um, uh, one of the, in conclusion, the, the uh, title of our, one of the titles of our seminar today was about building loyalty. And we truly believe that loyalty is earned. Um, I really love this uh, quote um, that talks about how uh, the way that you learn earn loyalty is when you meet your customer's experience 
um, expectations consistently or meet or beat them, and that that is the basis of trust and the foundation of the brand is trust. So um, as, you, as you've heard about some of these experiences, to be able to repeat those and uh, refine them, we think is key to uh, helping to, to, to uh, really have customers for life. And then finally, our key takeaways um, before we go to questions is um, really you know, uh, keeping a pulse on, on what uh, your customers or potential customers are, uh, are saying um, and about what they need and desire and want, um, what's going well and what maybe could um, be uh, refined, and also what trends are out there that, um, again, what are, what are people experiencing out in the marketplace that, that may be something for you to um, offer as a part of your offering to your patients and to customers. Uh, really central is this idea about al aligning around shared goals with the customer at the center of that. Uh, that's really been a key portion of our success, and uh, uh, so we recommend that as a, as a key takeaway. And then also kind of experimenting with this idea about how might you build, be building relationship with, your, with customers and patients in between when they need, uh, need us for some kind of health care yeah, I would say that um, a lot of what we've shared today um, is just a snippet of what we're doing to meet patients where they are. And so, um, you know, connecting back to our original theme of, you know, what are we doing around access and front doors and engagement, it really is, you know, how are we using market research to tell us how our patients want to be engaged with, want to engage with their health and their healthcare providers, and how do we meet them in those places. So a lot of the work that we're doing is, is taking those inputs and designing processes and collaborative solutions within our organization to uh, meet the patient where they are. So, so with that, we will um, uh, turn it back over to the other Megan uh, for questions that may have come in. Thank you, Jill, Megan, and Aaron for that fantastic presentation. We will now begin today's question and answer session. Please submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in a space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. You'll try to get through as many questions as we have time for. All right, so the first question is, what are a few of the metrics you are using to measure the effectiveness of your marketing strategy, such as health grades? Sure. So um, uh, there's a couple different things. Um, you know, one is that we um, look at net promoter score. So that's something that we, uh, you know, watch um, when we're sitting somewhere around 52. So uh, that's one metric. Um, we um, also are, of course, uh, joining with others in our institution about looking at patient experience and, uh, you know, hearing that direct response as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're, uh, we also have a, um, a strong partnership with a lot of our um, operations and clinical teams, um, and we can see the impact of our work in the data that a lot of them are tracking. So um, looking at where, when are we able to help improve quality, improve access, improve the same metrics that our operational colleagues are also tracking. Great, that's helpful to understand, thank you. Another audience member asked, do the community primary care physicians get angry that you have clinics for your employees? At our facility, some of our MDs feel that we are taking away their patients. Community PCPs get angry that we're caring for our own employees. For our own employees? Is that, I'm sorry, our own employees? Well, yeah, I would say, <clears throat> so I would actually, so I would say that, um, you know, our model um, through having our network really has, um, we see our primary care model as being a truly collaborative model. So um, Nashville is um, not unlike every other part of the country where there is a shortage of primary care physicians. So by having both campus-based resources that can care for the, um, you know, acute needs of our employees, um, and then having a network of providers, both Vanderbilt and then um, community PCPs that can establish long-term relationships with our employees, that's the model we've employed and, and it's been received quite well. So our employee health clinics 
um, that we have um, uh, for our own employees are not designed to be a longitudinal care model. They're really designed to meet those um, the needs of our employees in a in a uh, in a uh, acute need that they have, and then to refer them to a community provider for for a long term relationship. Thank you for that insight. Another audience member asked. What are your key metrics for your My Southern Health blog? How do you measure success? That's a great question. Um, we look at engagement. So we're really interested in how many times has somebody uh, shared something from that, uh, you know, opened it, looked at it. Uh, we, we believe particularly in the, that particular um, medium that what we're really doing is driving engagement, is building a relationship. So those engagement metrics are, are some of the key ones that we pay attention to. Great, thank you for that insight. The next question is, beyond hits, how do you measure effectiveness of social media? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Beyond hit, how do you measure effectiveness of social media? Hmm. So once again, um, we, uh, we look at that engagement portion of the statistic. We're really interested in um, not just how many people saw it, but what did they really do something with it? Did, again, did they like it, share it, uh, repost it, uh, comment. Co comment on it, any, anything that they've done to take an action on it, we, we think that those are the key measures for social. That's really interesting, thank you. The next question is, what metrics are used to measure customer loyalty and or customer lifetime value? So um, I'd say the, the ones that we uh, get closest to, again, are, are probably our net promoter score. So again, reminding folks that that's, you know, will, will people uh, recommend, how likely are you to recommend, um, which is a, a net uh, score. Um, so, you know, we, we really take a look at that uh, as a as sort of a proxy. We also are uh, looking at, um, uh, you know, we, we take a look at our uh, reviews and recommendations, and those also give us a feel for, um, you know, are, have customers moved into, uh, as we say, loyalty, but almost into ambassador land for us. So I think, so, you know, we're kind of using that as a proxy for loyalty. And then we can also uh, tell, you know, do people reuse us? Um, so looking at making sure we understand that they have, uh, they use us for their care and then that they return to their, our care, you know, we, we take a look at that as well in terms of um, loyalty or, or, or how, how, how sticky is their relationship with us. Great, thank you. That's helpful to understand. We have an audience member who would like to know if you're doing anything with telemedicine at this time. Our telemedicine um, work primarily right now is in a uh, physician to physician, provider to provider environment. So um, a lot of this work is um, um, in partnership with our providers in the Vanderbilt Health Affiliated Network. So we're able to, again, kind of um, help our uh, health hospitals and practices that are part of our network um, fill in any gaps in providers that they may not have in their local community, um, as well as evaluate um, uh, more, more um, urgent situations, for example, stroke situations, we can remotely consult with them in a stroke, potential stroke situation to see if um, TPA or other interventions would be appropriate for that patient. So largely, we have um, started our telemedicine work in a, um, in a way to help um, uh, deliver care that may be um, more available in our subspecialists at Vanderbilt than available broadly across the state of Tennessee and really helping to alleviate um, needs that some of our smaller communities have without some of those specialists on site. Um, but it is something that we are really actively looking at for a way to have another touch point and access point for patients and members of our health plan. So um, 
That's definitely an, an interesting, you know, conversation for us. Thank you for sharing that. This audience member wants to know, do you run any analytics on your phone calls to identify trends and opportunities for improvement or intervention? Yes, we do. So um, we work with our engagement center uh, to, uh, to to exactly look at you know what kinds of calls are we getting? How of course on their side they're they're uh, answering you know within a timely way. We're looking at uh, any kinds of frequently asked questions that are coming in in a certain area because partly that helps us inform. Is there a, a way to get that information out? Uh, online or in other formats, you know, it, it helps us take a look at that. Um, we uh, we look at um, you know how many people walk all through that call and then really move into uh, wanting to get an appointment. Um, so you know, converting over into that, we, we take a look at those as well. Um, and and as you as the person who asked the question said, we look at any patterns. We look you know at, for any kind of patterns like um, are people calling at a particular time of day or or evening or after hours, and 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 what might that be related to? So we we're taking a look at those as well. It's a really great um, the the engagement center um, that we have with Invera has helped us to. Um, um, really have a constant pulse on some market research um, specific to some of the um, uh, services that we have uh, that engagement center are helping us power, but it, it's given us some really valuable feedback on um, that we wouldn't normally get because we wouldn't be engaging with patients at that point in their journey. Um, we're really catching people a little bit at the top of the funnel with that work, um, helping answer their questions, helping them um, really understand if this is appropriate for them, and uh, those types of conversations are, are really valuable in helping us make sure that we are meeting people where they are. Thank you for expanding on that. The next question is, can you provide more information about how health on call works? Health on call. Health on call on how it works? Uh, sure. So. Um, Let's see. Uh, the way that it works is it, it's in uh, particular counties, like well, uh, Davidson County, as, as we've started, and that's the one that is uh, closest to us at this point. Um, and um, we uh, people can uh, uh, click um, or, or call um, to uh, find out. Um, you know how to have somebody come to them, and and then we, they send somebody out. Um, yeah, it's so a web or mobile-based app that allows you to um, answer a couple questions about the type of care that you need, where you're located, um, and then um, uh, there's a follow-up call that happens with the dispatch team um, to just confirm certain things, and then um, really, you know, a nurse practitioner comes to your um, home office, hotel, um, as long as you're located within the bounds of Nashville, which is Davidson County. So this is definitely a new service of ours that we see a lot of potential with. It really is very convenient. Um, it is a part of several um, health plans covered by certain health plans now. Um, so as we have been um, uh, growing this service and making sure that um, we have the footprint and also uh, um, the uh, services and um, the health plans um, are really key parts. Thank you for clarifying that. It looks like we have time for one more question today. How do you share your goals and insights to the entire hospital? In other words, how do you get them all on board? Well, that's a great question. So I think we maybe return to one of the key um, points of, of, of how we partner or how we are all one team. So, um, you know, uh, we all uh, actually, we like to all say our goals are your goals. So we literally all share some of the same pillar goals, which have to do with our service um, and our patient experience. So, um, it, it, you know, just right from the start, we're all uh, we're all measured by some of the very same metrics when it comes to some of these areas. Um, and then when we are having that conversation about how do we really join together, uh, it is again 
uh, saying, lying, laying out, understanding what is the goals of the clinic, the goals of the operation, and then how can we help uh, really under how can we really help underline that or um, facilitate making that happen? So it's a it's a generally a general. Uh, goal that we all share, and then we also, as we work into, into our, with our different individual teams, we're we're all agreeing on what is the goal of this project or this endeavor or this work that we're doing. We can see it most in the new services and new functions that we're starting up because, um, you know, we're very much part of the the design of the of the model and the services, and then using our you know kind of constant pulse on the market and um, how things how our marketing elements perform and what our operations and clinical colleagues are seeing um, on their end, kind of throwing all that information into the pot and coming up with the next best step for us in those, especially those new services and programs. So um, that has been a really rewarding um, piece of work for our team and, and the rest of the organization to see how we can all collaborate to grow new services and, and meet patients where they are. Great. I want to thank Erin, Jill, and Megan for this excellent presentation and to our audience for participating today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars.